Hi, I'm Amy Rodman. I'm a visiting artist with the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art and the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts. This video is going to cover information about paintbrushes and what will work best for you for watercolor painting. So even though I have a variety of brushes here, I have the ones that I'm most comfortable with and you will find what you like to paint with the best for your style. For instance, I like a flat brush whenever I'm doing a wash or a larger area. This is a mop brush and that's another perfect brush for that. It holds a lot of water, it's able to cover a lot of area, but it's just not my personal preference. And what you can see is what I did as I experimented with each of them. So the mop brush was able to cover a nice even area as well as the flat brush, but then I was able to create some other effects as well. Depending on what you are painting, and what you are doing, you're going to need finer lines that a script or a liner will work better for versus anything that needs to blend together. And you'll get to feel familiar with what you have. So you'll be able to find a downloadable or printable guide in the description. You'll um, just need to spend some time with it. And so I use scrap pieces of paper. I usually am cutting off little extra strips of paper off of the 9 by 12 to turn it into an 8 by 10 so that's why mine look like this. Another thing that you could do is quarter your paper so you're not wasting a lot but you're still able to experiment and so just trying out some different color combinations and experimenting with what each brush does is really helpful before you start diving into your actual painting. Knowing ahead of time what that is going to look like is just the best way to prepare yourself. We're going to start with the round brush, which is a nice compact rounded end. And what it's really great for are details, washes and filling areas thick to thin. So if I were to do a wash, I'd be floating it across the paper and filling in that area. If I need to work a little more detailed, I have pretty good control of this. And if I want to go thick to thin, I can start with more pressure and let up. as I'm going. The pointed round brush is one of my favorites. You're able to create finishing touches and fine lines and details with this. Of course, there's different sizes. And so as I begin working with something larger, I'm not going to get quite the detail, but you're pressing harder. You can press more lightly and get just a nice edge with that tip, with that point. Don't forget to have two cups of water. The reason I have two cups of water is because as I am rinsing out the dirty water, it's going to get very muddy. Check out that line. That was that thicker, harder pressure lifting up and you get a real nice fine line with something that has that pointed end. So dirty water, and then if I were to use this brush again, I would dip into the clean water before changing colors. And then I have a smaller one as well. And that doesn't mean that it gets the finer line. It just depends on what your brush is like at the tip. And you'll find that you'll have your favorites. And that's why this exercise is really good to test things out, see what each brush actually does for you. This one is going to get set aside. It's my medium brush that out of these three are my favorite. Flat brushes are great for bold strokes and really large areas. And if you notice, this flat brush is a bit longer. It has um, more stiff bristles. It is better for acrylic paint, but depending on what you're using it for on the watercolor, it's usable as well. But these two I use more frequently for watercolor. So we'll check this out and see the nice bold stroke 
In fact, it's so large, it's actually a little large for the pan of watercolors. And then it's going to lay more paint at the beginning, so you can always come back and spread it out more evenly. The smaller brush is nice for that controlled line, but you can still also create a larger area that's quite even with it. And then that brush with the stiffer bristles is going to apply the paint, you know, just in a different way. It will feel different than the others. It's not as good for watercolor, but sometimes you just want a little more control with the stiffer bristles. Or if you want to do something called a dry brush technique, which we'll get into when we start talking about different techniques, that's where I'm getting rid of most of the water and dipping into the paint, kind of brushing off the extra and can kind of scrape the top layer of the paper that top texture. A brush called the Bright is much like your flat brush, but it tends to be a little shorter. It is good for controlled strokes and those hard edges. So if you're trying to really control what you're doing, having the shorter bristles makes your brush a bit stiffer. And you can really just know exactly where that paint will be applied because it won't spread out so much. So nice controlled um, lines, even if you go sideways. Let's get a little more paint on there. If you're trying to control an edge and you want that hard edge, the bright is nice for that. The script brush is also called the liner or the rigger, and it's great for long continuous strokes or for outlining. So we'll try the larger one first. And because it will hold a good bit of paint and water, if it is a little thicker or a little longer, that's where you get those nice continuous strokes and it's not running out too quickly. You know, it lasts the entire length of the paper. If you go with something much smaller, it's wonderful for details. So you can control it real well, paint small details, get that continuous line, but just much thinner. As you can see, my spotters are very well used, so they have been a favorite of mine. They are really nice for detail work. Um, I tend to paint a little more in the style of realism, so I find these helpful for that. And they also have the smaller, shorter, rounded ends. So I feel like I can control it with whatever shapes and edges I'm working with. A little better than some of the other brushes that have longer, softer bristles. Not necessarily softer, they might still feel soft. It's that when they're longer, they're a little harder to control. Having the shorter bristle gives you a bit more control. This is the Filbert. As you can see, it is brand new and it actually has the stiffer bristles, which are better for acrylics. So this is not a brush I use frequently and I didn't have one for watercolor. Um, it is still a nice brush though for soft rounded edges and blending. So we'll see what this one does with the watercolor, though it's not one that I use as frequently myself. But you do want to just experiment. See, it doesn't hold the water the same that same as the softer bristles that are better for watercolor. Um, but the reason you want to experiment 
before you really get deep into your painting techniques is to find out what brushes work for you. Everything is going to feel differently for every person. So just because the filbert isn't my favorite doesn't mean that it won't be one that you use frequently. Fan brushes are used for smoothing and blending your paint or feathering. As you see, I have a set of three here, so different sizes. They're very soft, and when you add the water to them, you'll see that they sometimes split. I almost dipped in the wrong water. This one, again, is so wide, doesn't fit on there very well. But there you go, see how the water starts making them split into different sections. So you can get different textural effects because of that. We'll go to the smaller one. And here I have to layer over top if I want a solid coat. But if I'm going to blend my colors, it's a nice one for that. I have two mop brushes here, one that's very large and it will cover a huge area. So these are great for washes and partly because they have the soft bristles that can hold a lot of water. They do feel floppy compared to any of the other brushes that I've already tested out. Well, oh, you can see there's a bristle trying to escape. But it's covering just a nice even wash on onto my paper here. The larger brush is going to be better for backgrounds or an overall wash that you need to start your painting with. Depending on the brush, Sometimes it's a little too floppy. These I always test out first. This one's a pretty good one. I have to admit, I prefer the flat brushes to the mop brushes for the washes for the control aspect of it. But if I'm going for something very large, this brush is useful for that. This bamboo brush is really nice for long or loose flowing strokes. They're traditionally used for Chinese brush painting. As you can see though, it comes new in a point. It's glued together. So you need to soak the glue off of it so it becomes real soft and flowy. So we're starting to work that glue out of it. It's still holding it together up at the top yet. and they hold a lot of water. So continuous strokes, long flowy parts to your painting work well with this. You'll need to load a good bit of paint in it for that to happen. You can really control the thickness with your pressure. So look how fine that line is versus whenever I press down. These angular brushes are flat but sliced at an angle so you have a really nice way to create lines across edges and details. Let's start with a larger one. They're a little stiffer, so I tend to paint with them from the side, but you can still get the effect of a flat brush if you go this direction. But because of that angle, you're able to get a real nice hard edge.
and I just feel like I'm able to control it a little better than the flat brush at times. So we should talk about brush care a little bit. Whenever you have a brush fully loaded with your paint and you have finished painting with it, it needs washed out. When you wash it, you're going, depending on how much paint was already loaded into your brush, you might have paint up into the area where the bristles are attached to the handle. So the first thing you wanna do is kind of swirl, like in a figure eight is really good for getting that paint rinsed out. If there's a lot of paint still up here, I just do a gentle tap at the bottom, but then what happens is your bristles start spreading apart. And then there's my clean, cleaner water. I'm going to have to switch that out soon. So notice that I take my brush and I tend to go like this gently against the side so it starts reshaping it. You can take a paper towel to squeeze out the water, just gently placing it in the paper towel and then kind of pulling it backward. And then you want to reshape your brush so that it dries the way that you leave it. This particular brush also has a handle, not a handle, a cap that can sit over top of it to protect it. Whenever you are washing your fan brushes, you'll see that they're separated whenever it was wet. Swirl that around, get the extra out of it and it's starting to kind of form back together. I'm going to just lightly brush it back and forth to keep it flat and kind of squeeze out any extra water. But also notice that when it dries, it goes back to the actual shape that it was already preformed into. Something you may have noticed me doing as well is pulling just a couple bristles that were loose here and there out of other brushes. When I was doing that, I was preventing it, so for instance, the mop brush had had one. I was preventing that from shedding onto my painting. Also, notice that the mop brush, when it's very heavily saturated, it curls. So I want to get it back to that straight shape. So I'm gonna take this, squeeze it between the paper towel, and just kind of try to shape it back into a straight brush. But if there's any bristles that are coming loose, you want to remove those. That probably means that it was washed in too warm of water. So the metal that is holding your bristles together here at the end of your handle, you may have glue that is starting to melt. So there's glue inside here holding your bristles with, you know, also clamping it but if it is melting, they're going to start shedding. So it's like you're painting an animal. You know, my cat is gonna be left over on my painting and I don't want that to happen. So if you have been washing your brushes in very, very warm or hot water, there's a chance that your glue has melted. What you want to do is always wash in lukewarm water, nothing too warm. You know, take care of your br brushes as you saw there's a few of mine that are very well used. I mean, the paint that was coating my handle is gone. And they, as they dry, they tend to separate. That doesn't mean that they aren't still okay to paint with. You know, you have your favorite ones and this one, whenever the paint gets put onto the brush, they do kind of come back together. But this is a well used brush that is on its last leg. And in order to reach this kind of status, that means I've taken care of it for a very long time. Each brush has different parts to it. So just so you know what each of these are called, the tip of the brush is pretty obvious, the point or the tip. The bristles, the center part of the bristles is called the belly and where it attaches into the metal or at the handle. That is where it is called the head of the bristles, the head of the brush. This is the ferrule, and this ferrule is holding those bristles in where it has, has the glue holding those bristles. Then it is crimped onto the handle. 
You'll also notice that each of the brushes have different sizes and different information about them, usually printed onto it. So the smaller the brush, the smaller the number, each, each one, you know, each different style of brush still has the tip or point, the belly, the head, the ferrule, the crimp, and the handle. And then usually you can see what size they are until you have a very well-loved brush that has none of that paint left on the outside. So it's your guess is as good as mine. Honestly, once you get better at painting, you just kind of know the feel, you know the look of what you're you're wanting to use for each thing. But it's really good to practice and try out all of these brushes before you get too serious about it, just so you know what to expect every time you pick up a different brush for different parts of your painting. This is the amount of brushes that I just tested. What I'm going to do now is experiment with colors, experiment with different combinations of brushes, just some patterns. I'm not painting anything in particular. I'm going for a more abstract feel, just experimenting with designs and patterns to decide exactly which brush I feel most comfortable with and what sizes will create the effects that I'm looking for.